Well, today we have Natalia Hart, who is a dating and relationship coach. She works with women from all over the world, just like you and me, to identify what might be holding you back and teaches you, Natalia, teaches you the skills and the abilities you need to be successful in a relationship long term. Natalia's coaching also provides you the caring support and accountability on your journey to the relationship of your dreams. I love that. The relationship of your dreams. That's fantastic. Welcome, Natalia. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah, you for thank having you. me here. I'm super oh, excited about our conversation. <laughs> yes, as we said before I hit the record button, I, I'm excited for this conversation today because you know, I'm I'm really part of your audience, so to speak, <laughs> your target audience. So let's just jump right into dating. And if you could share with us how dating in your 50s and beyond is different from dating in your 20s or even your oh, 20s. That's a great, great question. It's amazing. So the difference is it's big. And it's also small in some aspects, but let's talk first about the biggest difference. The biggest difference is that when we are on our 50s, 40s and beyond, mm -hmm. we probably have already been married mm -hmm. and we probably have kids. Mm -hmm. So, And we probably are in a, in a time in our career, in our profession, in our life, where we are uh, feeling really good about it. We have more time, we have more money, we have done so many things, we have so much experience and wisdom and resources mm -hmm. that that all adds to the package because mm -hmm. we have a lot more to lose than when we are in our 20s teens or 20s where we don't have a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. We are still either starting a brand new job or maybe we are in college. We don't have kids usually. Um, we don't have a long, long, long past of experiences of relationships mm -hmm. that inform our future. So it's a little bit different also biologically when we are on our 20s, we are probably looking for a relationship to build a family, Definitely. to have kids. Right. Uh, we are buying a house. There, there are other challenges. It's, it's a little bit different in that way, that the questions, I also said that the quality of the questions we ask to ourselves, it's completely parallel to the quality of our lives. Mm -hmm. So the, what, the questions we ask to ourselves when we are on our late teens or 20s are completely different than the ones we ask ourselves when we are 40, 50 and beyond. That's true. Absolutely. And not only, I like that you, you address the fact we have more to lose, um, in a in embarking in a relationship, or especially a committed relationship, you know, forties, fifties, sixties, and beyond, than we did when we were our twenties. And a lot of it is financial, but it's also maintaining our relationships with our children and the family structures that we might already have in place. Um, but. Talk a little bit about, because we also, at the same side, we have more experiences, which can mean, as I call it, more larger U-Hauls that we're dragging around <laughs> behind us with all of our issues. How do you work, how do you help women, because you're a coach, how do you help women heal from possibly a divorce, a failed marriage, um, uh, the death of a spouse um, or a partner, um, how, how to move forward so that you're not bringing all that baggage into the relationship? Yes, that's a great question. And it's a process. But to answer your question, mm -hmm. I believe there is an important step to take at the beginning and um, as I like to say, imagine you have 
three files, okay? You are sitting on your desk or on your couch and you have three boxes with files inside. Okay. One file, one box full of files is the past. Mm -hmm. The other box full of files is the present. And there is a third box full of files that is the future. Mm -hmm. What happens, the work we do is with most women that come working with me, all of them actually, they have those files a little bit mixed up. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So they have the file of the past mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. And they have the file of the present almost non-existent mm. because they are so wrapped up in their head in their logical mind, thinking, overthinking, in fear. And any time that we are in fear or overthinking, we are not in our heart. And the only way to be in the present is when we are, as women, when we are in our body and in our, yeah. in our heart, and we are open, open yeah. to possibility. So you, you said almost every client that you've worked with, that is the case. The files are messed up. They're not right. the categories. Give give us an example of how someone would, uh, maybe one of your clients may have taken a past file and put it in the future. How, how, do, how do we do this? How do we mess with our files, so to speak? <laughs> right. Well, we, that's, that's the way our brain is made. Okay. Our brain is biologically made to allow us to survive. Yes. Not thrive, rather than thriving. Mm -hmm. So what our brain does is put all that past that is that hurt us, all those negative experiences, all those perceptions, because a lot is a matter of perception of yeah. negative experience and negative beliefs. Why we put it in the future? It's because our beautiful, super efficient brain and a strategic brain wants us safe. Safe, yeah. yeah. So if we always, when we think about, okay, I am going to um, go on a date with this guy, and immediately the sabotage comes in, which is the, the past in the future, comes in and says, no, you better don't go. You know, he may be a scammer, who knows? Or, or we do go, but we go in, not in our open, receiving, uh, beautiful self. Sure. That's our brain trying right. to keep us away from harm. Yeah. Yeah. So if we keep creating the future from the past, we are going to keep recreating the past. Yeah. The yeah. only way that we have a chance to create an, the amazing relationship that is for there, uh, for, out there for us, because it is there, it's possible. Mm -hmm. possible it is there there is a man for every one of us there is not only one love story there are many love stories mm -hmm. so the only way we are going to allow him to find us and be and sit our heart to let him in is if we start creating the future mm -hmm. from the future okay. so that's one of the first things we do we walk through that and we recognize what belongs in the past and we put it in the past. And we recognize what we really want in the future. And we start to create it backwards. Love it. With the future, our vision, our desire, mm -hmm. our true authentic desire that is very particular to us. My desire doesn't look like yours. Sure. And that's the beauty of it. Right. Our desire, that future becomes our North Star. Mm -hmm. So we have a high intention of moving little by little 
baby steps sometimes yeah. toward that North Star without having a heavy attachment to the results. Mm. And that's what makes the process fun. That's what makes the process expanding. Mm -hmm. You see, relationships, I believe relationships are in our life to make us have fun and, you know, enjoy ourselves and all that, but mostly to grow and evolve. Mm -hmm. I agree. To mirror us all our spots mm -hmm. so we can go and, and, and clean them up and grow, not change. I don't believe my clients need to change. I see them as whole, perfect, and complete. That's my my one of my values. Uh -huh. It's just allowing them, providing them with the right nourishment, with the right dirt full of nutrients, mm -hmm. so they can grow into the acorn, or they can go from the rose seed to the full-blown rose. Right. And that is a process. And yeah. hey, you know, sometimes some seeds have to die in order to regrow. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is not dying physically, but letting all those old beliefs and fears that are holding us back sure. die. So we can be reborn into the woman that is appropriate right now and capable for the job, fit for the job. Yeah, yeah, that it makes perfect sense intellectually. But it's so interesting how we get caught up. We don't even know it. You know, uh, you know, one of the phrases that people talk about today is unconscious beliefs. But we don't even it even applies to dating and relationships and what we think, um, whether or not we're even lovable. Um, it's kind of unconscious. We don't necessarily know it. Um, what do you think, though? Are the in all the women that you've worked with, what do you think, or, or are there any myths or kind of misconceptions about dating and relationships at this point in our lives that you have to really, you know, prove wrong or debunk in your in your coaching program? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are a lot, a lot of misconceptions and. Uh, misguidance, misguidance from culture, from mm. Hollywood, from um, oh, books. interesting. Like books. the books I grew up reading when I was a child, the romance from, you know, the 1800s, um, right. all that. So, yes. But the first thing that comes to mind right now is this idea, what I see happening a lot right now, is this misconception that if you want it, it's going to happen. Oh, interesting. You mean if I just I, sit, in, sit in my apartment and I think about what I want, it's going to happen? Right. Interesting. Right. <laughs> Doesn't when happen. the time is right or the best one, if it's meant to happen, it's going to happen. Oh, fascinating. That is a big, big, big uh, lie that we are telling ourselves. And it comes from fear. It comes from fear of rejection. It's solid fears. It's very valid fears. It's yeah. not that these fears are not valid. They do have a lot of validity. But there is a point in our lives as women that I call it we need to grow up. Yeah. There is a girl archetype that I work with, and it's this part of ourselves that is this immature part of ourselves mm -hmm. that keeps telling us those things. And, and that's part of the work we do is healing the wounded inner child. Mm. So that immature aspect of ourselves that is telling us if it's if it's meant to be, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm vanishes because that is not real yeah that is not real if i want to lose 50 pounds i have to change my lifestyle and my diet yeah yeah definitely there is no other way around or take pills or get the surgery something we have to take some sort of inspired action mm -hmm. and it's absolutely the same with relationships if we want if we have that desire inside of us of sharing our life with the right men for us, not with 
anybody. We yeah. are healthy, masculine men that adores us, that treats us as the goddesses we are, that is invested, that admires women. Mm -hmm. If we want that, we do have to take inspired action. And that may take different, different forms and shapes. Of course, the first one that comes to my mind, because it's the easiest and the fastest, is hire a coach, hire somebody that is devoting her or his life to the craft. Interesting. Another way could be, you know, because a lot of women are going to tell you, I don't have money. So find a mentor, find mm -hmm. a woman that has been happily married for at least 10 years mm -hmm. and happily married that you have proof that she's happy and ask her hey you know I am really really this year I am going to take inspired action and I'm going to grow into the woman that really gets to have a relationship with a great guy mm -hmm. even if I don't know how that looks like even if I don't have a model for that sure. but I'm gonna honor my desire would you mind when I run into challenges to help me out mm. what woman will say no it's an honor no no but you know what's very interesting about what you said and I was my brain when you said take inspired action and what is most typical or, or easiest my mind immediately went to online dating you know, right. set up a profile. And and I can't tell you how many friends I have who are now single who have done that. And they said they're getting nowhere. They're not meeting the person. So what you're talking about is doing the work actually before you do the online profile or online dating profile. Is that true? Is that, is it, would not you? necessarily. There is not a before and after. It could be during. Right. Okay. I don't have any really uh rule on that mm -hmm. now what i'm gonna say regarding that is that we are we i mean this may rub wrong some women but we attract what we are so if we have again the past file in our future and in our present and we create a dating profile and we go dating with all these, you said that you hold tracks, mm -hmm. with all these packs of things, we are going to attract more of the same. Right. It goes back to the first thing I said. Wow. Yeah. We need to clean up our act first. We need to clean up our story first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Something that I do with my clients answering, to be clear about your answer and to give a right, a concise answer is we do we do create a profile right away. Okay. And then over the weeks, we polish it. As oh, she okay. grows, yeah. she yeah. evolves, it starts to feel fake that because it's not aligned. So yeah. we they align more and they align more. And by the time, by three months, two months of working with me, the challenge is, oh, Natalia, I have so many high-quality men that I like that are pursuing me. How do I choose? That's the next challenge. Oh, my God. That's that, so, that's, that's that's a dream. So it's very interesting what you're, what you're communicating, Natalia, is, is so fascinating because we don't have to do it alone. We We can get into a program you offer what well, it sounds like a number of different coaching programs and there is a benefit to coming at it in multiple ways rather than um oh yes i filled out a profile i'm not getting any dates or i filled out a profile and i go on a date one once a week or whatever i'm just going to see how it goes which to me now doesn't sound a whole lot different than if it's meant to be it'll happen if I just go on dates without doing no. the work, without if finding we, the profile. Yeah. If yeah. we just go on dates and we keep, if we keep creating the same result and the same result, that is the cue. That is the cue that there is a need of growth. Yeah. That's yeah. the cue. It's interesting. If we keep creating, 
uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, um, I'm not going to say names, so uh, don't. <laughs> yes. But uh, this client hired me, and uh, she was already on a dating app. And uh, so we were working for two weeks, a week and a half. We were working together, and she was attracting all these guys that were looking for a fling. Mm-hmm. So I said, send, because usually if they are not dating, we create the dating profile together. But if they are already dating, you know, it may take me a week or so to get my hands into the dating mm-hmm. profile because, mm-hmm. you know, there is so much we can do. So I said, why don't you send me your dating profile? Let me take a look. So she screenshot her dating profile and sent it to me. In her dating profile, she had that she wanted a short-term relationship. Oh, fascinating. A fling. And from where she was coming from, I understand. She's a beautiful woman. She's honest, honest to God. She That's one of her values. She's an honest woman. She will not mislead anybody, okay? Mm -hmm. So what she was thinking is, I'm going to take it slow. So I want to be in a short term. But what she wants is to to find her future soulmate forever. Right. She wants a long-term relationship. Right. So, but she didn't, she couldn't see that. So we changed that. And now we are, starting to get higher quality men that are want the same thing she wants interesting Interesting. so it's it's it's, um we attract what we put out there and unfortunately as I, i said the cue to know if we need to do a little bit of reflection and processing and maybe making a few changes is is if we keep getting the same result that is, uh, you know, not what we want. Okay. Yeah. That's, it's interesting. I was just, I uh, was visiting family a, a week ago and a college friend of mine who has been divorced for a while and is online dating. She announced at the dinner that all she gets, uh, and there's nothing wrong with this profession. It just doesn't align with her. All she's getting is truck drivers from a particular part of the country and long term, like truck drivers that are gone for a long period of time. And it's really fascinating because I didn't know what to say in response other than something's wrong. Why are they, why are they attracted to you? Why are they contacting you? But I think that's a wonderful way, kind of a measure for each of us to use is if we're seeing a pattern of who is responding to our profiles. And it's not the person, it's not the kind of people that you really want to connect with. What's going on um, if there's a continual pattern of it? Yeah. So talk Do you mind if I give a a very good example? Do you mind? Because I I tell stories and give examples from other areas. Sometimes talking about this subject can be very triggering in a way. So. Mm -hmm. I want you to imagine, remembering, because you probably have been there and your viewers probably have been there too. Imagine that time in your life when you bought something. Let's say it was a red car. You bought a red Toyota car, okay? Okay. Up to that point, you never even noticed that there were red cars out there. Right. Right. You buy your brand new red Toyota car and you go driving around, you get on the highway, you drive, and all you see are red Toyota cars. Right. Yeah. That's it. You've it's attracted. the same with yeah. dating. It's, it's exactly the same. Whatever we have in our subconscious mind is going to make us see only what our subconscious mind wants to see. Okay. We only see what our eyes want to see. We only hear what our mind wants us to hear. Mm -hmm. That's why I recommend to women, I highly suggest to women to not get into those groups on Facebook that are just women 
talking about relationships without a professional moderator. Okay. Or to women talking to everybody, everybody and their mother, every friend, everybody that has ears about their love life, because that only triggers each other deeper into their wound. Interesting. Yeah. You yeah. said it. She shared with you, and you are a loving, smart, experienced, a professional coach. You are a woman that had devoted her life to, to grow and evolve. Mm-hmm. So that's who you are. And right. to help, and you care about others. Mm-hmm. This is not the first time we talk. So I, I know. <laughs> even you, when she was sharing with you, I'm only attracting truckers, you say, I didn't know what to say. Right. So yeah. I highly suggest you, as I said, if you don't want for X, Y, or C reason, hire a, a professional, mm-hmm. find a mentor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Talking willy nilly about our love life with other women and getting on those Facebook groups where they are, uh, you know, helping each other. It's well, no, so you have no, you have no context for any of those people. So um, this this woman, you know, is, she's been a friend, like I said, for a long time, and so consequently, I didn't know how far I could go. But in a in a Facebook group, when you've got people who are all commenting on very uh, in various ways, you have no idea their context, you have no idea their history, you you don't know what they're coming with and how big their U hauls are that they're dragging around, so to speak, right. filled with all of their. Pr- prior prior issues yeah um it's crazy so go but go to the 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 dating process because one of the things that you so kindly offered and that is down in the link um is the the um handout that you created which is the first thing to build connection with a man yes because everyone texts today you know, right. whether it's our children or it's our partners or it's somebody we're dating or work people, everyone's texting. So, you know, those of you who are in the dating process, otherwise you probably wouldn't be listening to this, you know, certainly <laughs> click on that link and get Natalia's suggestions. But talk a little bit about that communication process, because some people are horrible texters and some are absolutely um, you know, some of them you have to sit there and try to figure out what they're talking about. And I'm talking about, I'm comparing one of my children to the other one. I have no idea yeah. what my son is talking about, where my daughter is much more, she texts in complete sentences and it's much longer. So I, sometimes too long. So I know what she's talking about. The same in relationships. Some people, how do we manage this? Is that the direction that we're going with the kind of the dating process that also didn't occur when we were 20. Absolutely. I I love what you said. It's so real. And uh, all that is inside of the PDF about how to text. And uh, because, you know, right now they send you a T and a Y or you up and uh, how to navigate that. That can be so frustrating. And let's be honest, angering. When you are a 50-year-old woman and you have worked so hard to get where you are at right now and you're happy and you're excited and you, you know, you brought up those beautiful children and you have your house and it looks exactly how you want it and you exercise and, you know, you have good friends and all that and then you go, you know, that happy, you want to share all that light with a man and you get online on a dating app and you get a you up. It's heart <laughs> crushing. I mean, let's 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 acknowledge the elephant in the room. Dating is hard. Dating mm-hmm. hard suck. Yeah, I make it less sucky. Yes, I yeah. make it a lot easier. I help them to make it a lot easier, okay. so it doesn't have to suck. Yeah. So regarding the communication, you're you're asking talking about communication. I redefine what dating is, and that has a lot to do with my um, with my communication tools. Okay. For me, dating is, I, I tell my clients, 
call it unicorn, call it peaches, I don't know, whatever. Don't call it dating because it's actually meeting. You are a meeting man. Dating apps are a fabulous, fabulous tool that if you are listening to this and you are hating dating apps, I lovingly, this is a love truth bomb, I lovingly encourage you to look around around the whole world and see how many women out of all the women in the world have access to a smartphone that has or access to 30 bucks a month to pay for a dating app. So right there, we are privileged. Mm -hmm. Right there, we are in a good space to create create a relationship that is out of mm -hmm. out of touch for most women in the world. Right, right. I agree. Most yeah. of them. I don't want to throw numbers because I haven't read the numbers lately, but it used to be really small the amount of people sure. that have the internet. Anyway, so let's there is that. We get to find the love of our lives, at least the first steps, wearing pajamas in our living room. <laughs> okay. When he's not sitting on the other end of the couch, <laughs> you know. Right. Right. We get to delete him like with, with a little touch. So it's safe, it's convenient, mm -hmm. it's practical, it allows us for growth. Mm -hmm. There are so many good things about it that yeah. many, many women, even today, don't have access. So let's jump, let's bask into that and say, thank you, God, for that. Mm -hmm. Number two, what happens with dating apps is that the funnel is huge. Right. Start. There are a ton yeah. of men. Now, because of that beautiful thing, it's also the challenge that the quality men are very few and far in between. Mm -hmm. And out of the quality men, which ones we're going to be attracted to are less far um, and few in between. So knowing all that, as a smart, successful, driven women, we have to set up ourselves for success and for winning because we cannot do it any other way. Mm -hmm. So the way we do it, is we see it as meeting with very little investment. Definitely. Mm -hmm. It's just, dating is just to get to know a guy to see if he's healthy Mm -hmm. If he is, uh, you know, a man that I call it a masculine energy man, which means that he wants to please us, he wants to provide for us. And that doesn't mean money, but, mm -hmm. you know, like provide. He, he wants to provide and protect us, even if we don't need protection. Mm -hmm. But he has that, he wants to be the, the, the masculine energy in the relationship. And that we are on the same page, that we have the same values, that we have want the same lifestyle, you know, that we... And the last one is if we have some chemistry, because it's not the first um, parameter to say yes or no to a guy, but eventually it has to be there. Sure. Otherwise, you know, we don't want to be with a guy that we are not attracted. That's, I, right. mean, I don't even need to say it. <laughs> so, so there is that. That's what dating is. So how we do it is we create our dating profile. Actually, right now, I am hosting a five-day epic day challenge. So after this, I am going to do that. Oh um, so I do host this. It's a free challenge where I teach them how to date. So that's exactly what I am doing these five days right now. Fantastic. Funny. Uh, so we get our profile. And then we accept invitations. They will send us a message. We answer back inside of the app. We do not get outside of the app. We get a Google number to talk on a Google phone number. We do not give our personal information until we are sure that the guy is legit. Okay. So we, the key is non-investment, very little investment, Mm -hmm. Talking to a few guys at the same time, so we don't put all our energy in one guy, 
because sure. that's a lot of pressure for anybody to to take mm -hmm. and um we move quickly mm -hmm. through the texting on the app like two or three texts i get my clients on a 10 minute phone call because that way they will know if the guy is boring to death and cannot hold the conversation you know you you get to uh, so yeah. i have a timer okay minutes and after 10 minutes you say okay and then if it goes well you go on a first date in person him in person and it has to be fast because okay. there is no way in this world that we are going to know if we like the guy unless we meet him in person person i agree yeah and that first date it's very important that and and this creates a lot of i i ruffle a lot of feathers with this <laughs> and why but i said the first date has to be a coffee date okay if i meant an hour in a public place it's a coffee date and i coach them how to go on that date and uh, the ruffles that i the feathers that i ruffle are like oh i don't want him to think that i'm a cheap date isn't it that gonna set up the oh, interesting and i am like no it's the same thing with oh my god i don't want him to think that i am a you know weak because i am in my feminine energy and i am like no Okay. If you are not weak, if you have raised children, you have get, taken care of a household, a mother maybe, a father, a friend, you had a business, mm -hmm. you take care of your fitness, you you go to the bank, you... Right, you're not, you're not job weak. That you are pretty strong and smart. Right, right, exactly. It, I mean, I am super strong and smart. There is no way. And I am in my feminine energy with my husband and with all the men. I practice with all men. But come on. Yeah, Do I that's it? interesting. I think it's something uh, actually um, American is part of the almost American woman, professional woman culture is to not step into our feminine energy Absolutely. yeah Absolutely. because it wasn't it wasn't something that was acceptable at the office so how do you Absolutely. have to shift gears when when and, you and right there that's what makes me get my 99 percent success with my clients yeah because i am latina mm -hmm. i grew was born and raised in argentina i lived there for 27 years and that's the first thing when I when I moved to the States that I saw. It was the thing that I loved the most about American women. And it was the thing that made me feel like, oh, you know, if they knew. And then that's one of the reasons I do this. Because I was like, I love this woman. You know, my friends, they'll be so strong and independent and go get her. And they weren't giving explanations about anything. No permission asked. <laughs> and at the same time, divorce, 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 divorce. Interesting. divorce. They couldn't keep a man to save their lives. Yeah. And that's what I noticed is that when we are like that, with them, that's a great mentality and identity. I call it identity to have when mm -hmm. we are in the masculine world, a.k.a. work, business. Mm -hmm. Right. Know? Yes, works. I am yep. an athlete, so I like to win races. So perfect there. But when it comes to a relationship with a man that is juicy, that is intimate, where he adores us and he really wants us happy and, and you know, he's investing in us and seeing us and just so in love with us, we have to be in our feminine energy. Otherwise, they feel that they are with a gorgeous beautiful woman on the outside wearing heels and a dress but the way they feel is that it's a man dressed up in heels and with a dress so it turns them off fascinating yeah uh, it's really interesting and and what comes to mind also is that that is not an easy process and it may be a process not just from a from a work experience your, you say you were in a corporate environment, but it might also be the the role you played in your prior relationship, right. your marriage. And so it's going to take some time to 
step into what does that mean to step into our feminine energy you know uh, yeah. i honestly if you asked me that question you were my coach i couldn't tell you i couldn't i could not put into words what that means and i don't think i'm that different than a lot of the women that are on this call absolutely, yeah. absolutely. yeah very interesting you know yeah. one of the comments you said is you know uh, you teach people, and maybe you can explain a little bit about that, about how to express our needs as a woman and, you know, how to, in a way that the man actually hears us and and right. wants to um, address those needs, please us. Uh, you know, and it's a two-way street. I'm not implying it's it's all about me, but or it's all about the woman, but how to express those, what our needs are. Because part of that masculine energy is not asking for help, not being vulnerable, not saying this is what I need. Um, right. Do, do you see that over and over with your clients? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a huge part of the work we do. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and I, I just want to say something that I have been saying already, but this is not something to be ashamed of. Because I used to be shame, ashamed of not, not knowing how to communicate. Mm. You know, when I finally got it, when I was in my late 20s, that I was, I sucked at relationships, a, a sense of shame came over me. Mm. But then there were coaches like me, there were in podcasts like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was on my own. I was on my own with Barnes and Noble and the public library. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. So completely different story. The internet was just starting. Right. Um, it's Very a long good. time ago. So yeah. there was a, I remember this big sense of shame. And I want to say that there is nothing to be ashamed of. We are not taught these things. Mm -hmm. There are so many men, the women that we see that, you know, they have been married forever, they're happy. Those are the naturals. There are naturals for everything. You know, there are naturals for boxing. There are naturals for six packs. There are naturals for everything. Well, sure. if you don't fall into that category, there is nothing wrong with you. It's, it's, just, it's just a skill that is not taught to us mm -hmm. as women. Mm -hmm. uh, even me, I went to a private private Catholic school, girls only, my whole life. Sure. They taught me how to be a housewife at right. a practical level. Right. But never at an emotional level. At That's a community. what I'm saying. Yeah. You yeah. Know, they were teaching me how to sew, how to cook. How... So I just want to make that very clear because when we are in that space of being ashamed, we it's very hard to see the way out and mm. to ask for help. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, there is exactly. no shame on this. Nobody taught us. So communication. The first step with communication, there are a few steps that are very, very important. The first step is realizing that um, in the English language, there is we confuse feelings, what we feel, with uh, with what we do. So first we need to get really, really clear on what we feel as women. And this is, you know, you, you have to do the work. It's a practice. It's a practice where, you know, you are for an X, Y, or C period of time, you are asking yourself, hmm, how does it feel to put the lip gloss? You know, it feels, oh, it feels good. Wow, it feels tingly. Yeah. See, um, you know, how does it feel, my my dress? Mm -hmm. Oh, it feels... Mm. How does it feel? It feels soft. It feels good. Yeah. Good to have this against me. So first is getting in touch as women with what we feel, because oh. that's the way we communicate with a man. Mm -hmm. okay their heart mm. um, and there is a longer explanation but i don't i don't know if you want me to say the whole explanation but we are talking about communication so yeah. for yeah. time purposes i'm going to try to leave it at that so we communicate through to a man in a romantic way 
Mm -hmm. through their heart, not through their mind. Okay? So we communicate through feeling words. So the first thing that we will do say is when we have a need that is unmet, okay. like give me an example of a need that could be unmet. Something you want to ask, Jodai. Uh, oh, good Lord. You're, you've got me in, in unknown territory because I'm sitting there thinking about my long-term marriage and how I really had stepped out of feelings and it became doing. I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, and he's telling me, have you done this, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think, you know, as an example, I would really, I would like to feel, this might sound bizarre, as a woman, I would I want to feel feminine. I want to feel that I want to step into that feminine energy. I wouldn't use that phrase with a man, but I want to feel that he loves me or is attracted to me or honors me as a woman, not okay. by accomplishments. Okay. That is a great example. Mm. That is a great example. And you're not going to like the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Natalia, you're wonderful. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> so you want you want him to make you feel loved. You want him to make you feel feminine. Mm -hmm. yes. Nobody can make you feel that. That's true. So you have to feel that yourself. Yes. Yeah. So let's go. Wait. Wait. Yep. When you are with a man, the mindset is, the baseline is, I appreciate this man, I trust he loves me and adores me. Okay. Otherwise, you have nothing. Okay. Okay? Uh -huh. so, now, what do you want him to do to you in order to feel feminine? Oh, it's manners. You know, okay. opening the door for me. Uh, okay. um, I'm going to sound very old fashioned, but but even a little bit of emotion if I have to get up from the table, from the coffee. Um, maybe a man who says, can I get your coffee? What 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 would you like? Um, okay. That that would all feel that would make. That, me feel okay. Good. You see how it's different? How it's different? Mm -hmm. Wanting a man to make you feel that you are loved and then that that's impossible because if you don't feel loved, we go back to the files. Right. <laughs> if you don't feel that you are loved, if you don't feel like you're enough to be loved, there is no man. The man can be telling you every single day, yeah. can be opening the door, can kiss the floor you walk by. Sure. Uh, you're not going to feel it. Right. You're absolutely right. That was me. I used to, my belief was I don't deserve to be loved. Love is not for me. So I was dating before I did the work. I was dating all these guys. They were kissing the, the floor I was walking and I never felt the love. Mm, yes. Because if we don't feel it ourselves, no. if we don't. Yeah, that's, that, that's really interesting. Yes. But then, okay. But then, so let's go to the, so I answer the question because, you know, I don't want to leave you with, without answering your question. So you want, you want more, you want more touch, you want more words, you want more uh, affection. That's what you want. And did I hear you right? You want more. Yeah. So the way you are going to handle it is number one, the mindset. Let's put that there now. Yes. Because you brought it up. As you can see, it's very deep. That's why my program is three months. Mm -hmm. Because it's a lot. Yes. It's not fruitful stuff. It's very deep work that we do at, at times. So he loves me. I know he loves me. I know he adores me. That's the mindset. And then you come to him and say, hey, honey, is this a good moment to talk? I would like to have a word with you. What do you think? And he's going to be like, yeah, sure, my love. What do you need? What right. Do you need? Right. And you are going to be like, you know what? As of lately, you know, I'm just a girl here. And, you know, girls need touch. Mm -hmm. Girl needs talk. 
girls need affection to feel good. And, uh, you know, as lately, I have been feeling a little bit, and then you go to how you feel. Let's say you feel sad for the purposes of this, or lonely. Yeah. Um, I feel a little bit lonely. Um, so, you know, without getting all that. Mm-hmm. Is something I should know? You hear that? Yeah. There is something I should know. What can we do in order to make this better? Mm. And then you. That's it. Stop talking. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I did there? I completely, I made myself vulnerable. Mm-hmm. You did. In a classy way without mm-hmm. lowering my my value. Mm-hmm. He's my husband, he's my partner. Mm-hmm. We've already had sex. He has seen all my parts. So, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. And I am asking for what I want in a way that he can hear me because I am not telling him, hey, you never touch me. Right. The last time we, you opened the door for me was like five months ago. Right. You haven't put him on his defenses. Right. Uh, yeah. You're not making him wrong. Mm-hmm. You're not criticizing him. Mm-hmm. You're not telling him what to do. Mm-hmm. You are not, co- you know, coercing him. You are not giving him ultimatums. Mm-hmm. All those things and a few more don't work with men. They don't work with men and they don't work with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't, it don't, don't work with your children either, you know? <laughs> especially adult children or teenagers. And they are six years old and younger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's really, so So you walk someone through in the coaching program. So is it a group? Is it individual? One on one. And we literally, before this, I had one of my coaching calls with one of my clients and we literally role play this oh interesting so i was the man and she was yeah. telling me and I corrected her corrected her redirection until she got it right and off she goes she goes to do her best yeah. and when you come from that place of authenticity mm-hmm. of, sh- of showing him your your pink belly you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. telling him you know i feel this way you are not telling him you make me feel so that's why I always say, try to not say the, the, avoid the word hurt because you cannot, you know, when we say I feel hurt, usually he gets the idea that he hurt us. So that's the only word that is out of, I wouldn't use. Okay. But the rest, if I feel lonely, I can feel, as I said before, I can be surrounded by people adoring me. I can feel lonely anyway. Have you been in that situation? God yeah. knows I have been there. Of course, you can feel like not loved, and you can be surrounded by people that love you. Right. So, you know, you can. It's it's not putting it on them. It's sure. just opening up yourself to share how you feel, mm-hmm. and uh, then asking him, because men are fixer uppers. They get into fixing mode. Men need ladies. Listen to this. Men need to do good in order to feel good. Okay. So if he's a good guy, he will want to do, he will, he will want to fix it for you because mm-hmm. he will feel mm-hmm. good about it. Mm-hmm. Women on the opposite side, we have to feel good to do good. Okay. How but many times opposite. have we worked with a woman that is feeling unhappy in her personal life and she makes everybody at work miserable? Yeah, yeah, definitely. If we feel bad, get out of our way. <laughs> and it's everywhere. We can't contain it is what you're you're talking about. And that's all, why it never contain it. Yeah. It's so real. we are facilitating him to, to jump into doing mode, which is the masculine energy, is the doing, is the logical, mm-hmm. is the one plus one is two. Women, we are uh, we are more, uh, you know, we are heart oriented. We are, we bring colors to their lives. We bring music to their life. We bring textures. We bring feelings. We bring all the beauty of life to them. Men live in a black or white world where everything is very, 
linear and it's all about numbers and goals and achieving and all sure. that. Uh, but when it comes to romantic relationships, they want somebody that complements them, that is their opposite complementary. So mm-hmm. if they meet a woman that is treating them as they treat their employees at work or their children, it's not That's gonna cool. work. No, no. That men, and and the thing is that men, most men are wonderful creatures. So they they don't even leave. Yeah. It's yeah. just shut down. Sure, sure. Whether it's in a marriage or it's starting a relationship in many ways, what you're talking about, um, I think uh, even relates to both kinds. You know, someone who is trying to navigate the world of dating to find that special someone, as well as someone who's trying to work on their relationship, which often has to happen once the children leave the home or the children are reach a certain age. It's like, all of a sudden you have to reconnect with that person you've been married to and what you're talking about. It's really interesting to me though, Natalia, because yeah. when you read about how the gray divorce numbers are really, really high and wow. most of them are actually occurring because it's women's choices, not men, which is also interesting, but some of this is a retraining of women as to right. we relate to men, whether it's our partner or some, we want to find somebody. Um, right. Yeah, I, this fascinating. I do, believe, I do believe in, as I said, I, I have all, I went through a private Catholic school, girls only since I was five years old. I, I had only sisters. My mom's a powerhouse. I'm surrounded by powerhouses. So I love women. I admire women. I believe women. We have all the power. And that's what all my experience of all these years had, you know, I I am at this point where I believe that we have the upper hand. And if we do the work and we make these subtle changes, we can save the relationship. Men are very receptive. They're very simple. (laughs) <laughs> they are but you know but they're amazing i love men i love right. men i think they're right. amazing creatures i mean i love my husband i adore him sure but he's such a s- simple person right right different we're different yes and, and understanding those uh, differences right it's about understanding men and for us yeah so yeah we can we can make more informed choices and uh, to heal our inner wounded child so we can make choices also informed from this adult persona that we are today and not the one that we were, you know, when we were five years old, seven years old. Or 25, you know, sometimes. Um, This is... This is fascinating, and uh, all the information as to how you can connect with Natalia are are down below in the show notes. But truly, you've you've actually shifted the the whole thought process that I had. Now, when I'm sitting with my friend in, in Minnesota, as an example, and she's talking about her online dating profile and what's wrong with it, and recognizing that sometimes the profile, and you described it with the clients that you work with, it's not the profile's fault. You can't write the perfect profile. You could, but that's not the problem. Part of the problem is what's going on inside of us. Where are our files? Are they all present, right. past, future? Are they all matched, uh, you know, with absolutely not a tab to be seen? Um Really, thank you. This was really, really oh interesting, God. Natalia, and kind of mind blowing as to how to go mean, about. Yeah, to me. yeah, this was this was really, really interesting. So, everyone, you need to connect with Natalia, whether you're married <laughs> or you're you're finding someone, and even if you know you're you're not heterosexual, this all of this applies, you know, in, in every relationship in so many ways. So thank you. Thank you, Natalia. I so appreciate your time today and your wisdom. Oh my goodness. Thank you. (laughs) Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. My entire pleasure. Absolutely.